Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. He has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Now know the two words there. Together. He raised us up. Oh, let's read. Go. He raised us up so that we will sit. He raised us up so that we will sit. He raised us up so that we will sit. Some of you think God raised you up. You don't sit with us. You pass around. Life has become well that you, you pass around. Now, I was giving this teaching to my leaders earlier. I just had to have a deep time with them on this, but I'm going a little way from that a bit. And I said, if, practically speaking, if you meet me and we are talking, Shepherd Sam, if you meet me and we are talking and you say, Daddy, can we sit down so let's stand? What it simply means is that I'm not going to have that leisure, the time to sit with you or to be with you for long. Standing means that our time is limited. Many people are in Christ, but they are not seated. They are standing. That's why they keep backsliding. Even Jesus, Paul tells us in Ephesians, is seated in heavenly places far above principalities and powers. Look at somebody and ask the person, take your seat, that, are you seated in church? What did the person say? <laughs> you have a seat on, but you are not seated. You know, many people have this thing that they say that test the spirit and see if it is good. So you've been testing God's church for 20 years, 5 years, 6 years. One, you've been in this church for 1 year. You still don't know the spirit that is in this church, so you won't sit down. A person who sits in a place has permanency in the place. Now, the oil, the anointing oil, or the power of God that is resident in a man of God is determined by the people around him who are seated, not those who are standing. I'll go deep. God does not count those who are standing as those who are with you, but those who are seated. So the Bible said, God, my microphone is misbehaving. That's a victor. So the Bible said, God has raised us up together. You see, the thing about God is that he doesn't want to raise an individual. He wants to raise an army. Are you with me? He wants to do what? Raise an army. So, an army that I've taught you on this before when I did it, he gave some apostles, some prophets for the equipment of the saints, for the work of the ministry. We all come to the unity of the faith. So, what is happening is that he raises all kinds of people so that in time of need, you don't just have to go to a pastor. So, let me give an example again with you. God can make you a very big time entrepreneur. Not because you qualify, but because he wants all, all, all unemployed people in the church to get a job. Which means, I can lead people to heaven. But for them to survive and make it on earth, they will need a job to survive. And so God will give you business. If you start employing unbelievers, you have erred and God can take their business from you. Because you don't understand that God is raising us up together so that we can all equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Are you, are you with me? So sometimes you'll be there and God will tell you that I'm giving you a new AC. And you come to church and God will tell you that you see that person there, that is the AC to the person. And that's the person who has just gotten a new shop and is praying to God that oh God, I need AC. If I get AC, my life will change. And you will not listen to God. Because the, the person God will tell you to give it to is not the person you like. 
Let me say this. It's funny. I had a vision concerning someone who's misbehaving around me. A vision on somebody. Very bad. And I had to pray for that person. And I didn't want to pray. Then the Holy Ghost came to me and said, I send this person money. I said, me? So I, w- I went into my momo. I even showed it to somebody, one of my pastors. When I sent the person the money in my account, which was 150 the only money left in my account, it is still the same, in my momo is four cities, 20 pesos. You know the message the person sent to me? is because you miss me. Instead of you apologizing for the nonsense you did, you see, <coughs> the money in my account is first, it is maybe 20 pesos. But I had to send. I was going to send 10 cities or 20 cities. God said, no. And just then, after I sent the money, my wife calls me and said, she had a strange dream this afternoon that somebody was having a watch and the watch had been 10 to 15 years. I said, Kai, that's why I had to send 150. I won't explain the riddle. But the truth is that a lot of us don't even know that whatever you have is not yours. Your life is not your own. God can decide to take your life and make you go into, God forbid, prison, just to go and pray for somebody who commits suicide. And two days later, they will say you are acquitted and discharged. It's not your case. And society will look at you and call you a criminal. But in the annals of God, you are never a criminal. He just used you to do his will. You see, if believers would come to a place of understanding that there is nothing that we have, that is our... The Bible actually says, a man can receive nothing until he's been given to you from above. And if you think everything you have is yours, let God make you stop breathing one hour. And that is the time you know that everything around you, you don't have it. Are you with me or you are not with me? That is why if God calls you into the ministry, God calls you, you need what we call a very large heart. You need a kind of heart to be able to do what God wants you to do. Now, most often, you will see that a lot of people come around, but you can easily know that this person that has come around doesn't have a future with you. How do you know the person doesn't have a future with you? Anybody that is not seated in your life is not having a future. You are dating somebody. Let's go and see your father and your mother. He says, no. Can I know your house? No. Where do you stay? I won't tell you. What is your future plan? It's me. Let me kiss you. You will kiss. Let's have sex. We have sex. Give me money. There's money is given. Where do you stay? You must not know. Do you think you have a future with such a man? Or oh, answer me. Or oh, such a woman? No. You know that. So you think me too. I don't know when I don't have a future with you. I think God also doesn't know when he doesn't have a future with you. If you can read the weather and know that this person doesn't have, I don't have a future with this person. You are working in a company. They don't want to pay your snit. Are you with me? Today, they, they employ you. Tomorrow, you go. Come. It's casual. You are not employed. They, they pay you by day. means that, Master, you are not permanent. When it is permanent, it is not by day. It is monthly, annual, quarterly. And when you are really a part of it, it is not even monthly. It is based on profit. I think I'm not teaching somebody here at all. And so sometimes, we get to a place that we are not seated. I know someone said, so what do I get when I'm seated? In the Bible, you will note, and last week I got there and I paused, that a woman went to see a prophet and said, my husband, a prophet is dead. 
and he, uh, he left me two sons. Some say two sons. And the two sons that he left for me, he went to use them to do uh, butter for food. Now, a prophet who has two sons, you use your two sons for butter, and now the money you got is finished. One of the things you should never do in life is, not, is to devalue a human being. Whenever you sell a human being, you devalue a human being, you have devalued your life. The most potent thing in life is a life. And as long as a person is not dead, there is hope. God can change anybody's life, any day, any time. Are you here? You are not here. Yeah. I've seen God change people and make them a millionaire overnight. And I'm like, what? You? And I've seen millionaires begging overnight. And I'm like, what? You? He used his sons to trade. God never trades human beings. And now the people came and they said they wanted his sons. Now don't forget that I taught you this that when Abraham saved that five cities with Sodom and Gomorrah, the king told him that take all the goose and give me the young men. And Abraham said no. You want the men who came to fight. Amen? You want the men who came to fight and got the goose. We should take the goose and leave the people we have raised for you. Abraham said, no, I will keep the men. Some said, keep the men. Many people have chosen money, opportunities over people. And anytime you choose money, opportunities over people, you have failed in advance. Well, you won't hear that because it doesn't sound nice. Oh, amen. Your amen is not good at all. So these sons of the prophets were about to be taken for slaves. So this woman decided to seek another prophetic, prophet's advice. And the prophet said, okay, the first thing I want to ask you is, what do you have in the house? And he said, my husband left me a bottle of oil. It is led with the under. And we now know the story that this oil multiplied. But my question is that, so didn't the prophet who went to sell or mortgage his two sons also have the same key that this oil in his house can multiply? No, he didn't. But let me tell you this. Life is full of patterns. I repeat it. Life is full of patterns. If you go and visit a shrine, then whatever will ask you to say your case, as he says your case, he will tell you that, ah, this thing, this is the pattern. He will tell you that it is, he knows the gods and the evil spirits and what they do. So he will tell you that this one is marine. Like, if you come and tell me, I'm not getting married, and I have this appointment, I have said back. One of the first questions any prophet will ask you, do you have dreams somebody sleeping with you? He said, no. He said, ah. Do you see children in your dream? Most likely. If you don't see one, you see this. Is it word of knowledge? No, it's a pattern. It's a system that a team follows. And when you are a man, a woman of God, you are born again, and you don't understand the patterns that operate in the spiritual realm, things that happen in the physical realm will always destroy you. So God told Moses in the book of Hebrews, um, it is written in the book of Exodus, but yet in the Hebrew Bible, that make sure that you follow the exact pattern. Because if you don't follow the exact pattern, I will not be with you. So Moses strikes the rock twice. And God said, you have destroyed the pattern. This pattern, that rock is Christ. Christ will be struck on his side once. You have struck it last year one. This year you have struck it. You will not go into your promised land because you can't destroy patterns. And whether you like it or not, Jesus said your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Whatever is on earth, the replica is in heaven. 
The spiritual of that thing is in heaven before the physical. But you cannot change this physical until you have first changed what is in the spiritual. Because it's the spiritual that controls the earth. Let me, let me tell you this because this thing is important lest I forget. You see, most often, I will repeat it. The reason why you are failing and you don't sit down is that you are going to heaven. But can I tell you this? God does not want you in heaven. I'm sorry. Anybody who tells you that God is want you in heaven has life. Read your Bible, Revelation 21, 1, 22. Says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. God did not put Adam and Eve in heaven. He put them on earth. The place that we will be, finally, finally, is on this earth. So if, that is why I, I repeat, any time you are rich and you don't have soil, you've not bought a land, you are poor. Poor people don't have a possession of the earth. You must be a landlord. I say you must be a landlady. You must have part of the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. Either you buy it, they dash you. Your name must be on a land somewhere. Or are you here? You are not here at all. I say your name must be what? You must be on a land somewhere. And one prophet had little oil and yet didn't know what it was and went to sell his children. What have you sold because of what you did not know? One of the things I never like to do is to sell a car. I will either reduce it for somebody around me to buy or dash it. You know why? To you, it's a car. But to me, sitting in the car puts oil in the car. Puts anointing in the car. Put a certain grace in the car. And so selling the car, I'm not just selling car, I'm selling unction. <laughs> Let me show you something. What is this? It's a hand. It's what? Is what a hand. What is in this hand? Oh, look at Chiano. Look at Chiano. Yes, you don't know what is in the hand. That prophet didn't know what was in the oil. It took another prophet to tell the wife that, listen, woman, that oil in your house, the only reason why the oil is not functioning is that there are no empty containers. There are no human beings. There are no vessels. Their prophet's capacity was more than two sons, but he has only gotten two sons, and those two sons have been enslaved because the sons you have, your leadership should have had the ability to go to the towns and the village and bring empty vessels, people who don't know what they have, and come and pour this oil in them, and nobody would have been poor. The reason why most churches are poor is that they are the looking at the people who are around them when they truth that there are a lot of untapped anointing, on top resources, on top people, anointed people who are not in the church. And yet, they will never bring them in to come in and get some of the oil. So the oil of the man of God is stale. You know what is stale? Okay, let me speak your English. It's like putting oil. This oil, if you put it in the deep freezer, it will be stale. Most Christians are too cold to make their oil flourish. So the oil has become stale. And those of you who came for my meeting on Friday, I taught you why you need to be on fire. Because when you are on fire, your oil can never be stale. So the prophet told him, told her, go, let your two children go and do a work equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. They should go and borrow empty vessels. Go and do what? Borrow empty vessels. In other words, what is saying is that there are people who also have vessels but there is nothing to fill it with. You have an empty, almost empty vessel. Very soon, you will join the empty society of the world. I'm teaching something. Let me tell you this. You can have five CDs in your hands. 
If you don't know how to use that five cities, you will join the poorest association of world incorporated. People had hundred Ghana, hundred dollars, and they have become millionaires. You have two thousand dollars, you are still poor. Why? One day years ago, I told God, I got if I can get that is today's money. Thousand cities, I will never be poor again. It was true. And just then, I'll never forget it. A woman whose husband had been around for years, they had brought from Yabaka to America. He had born in Holland, Abagana. He could not get a visa. He came to visit us in Malam. And I prophesied that on this day, the man would travel back to Holland. And the man traveled. When he got there, he got money and brought a bus down. When he brought the bus down, they sold the bus. And he said, man of God, my wife wastes money. So this is 1,500. That is 15,000 those days. Keep the money with you. And any time they need money to pay fees, they should come for it. When the money came, I knew that this 1,005 is the money I asked for. I, Pastor David is here. I utilized the money. I bought certain things the church needed went on radio and did some things to please the church. And any time now, the church was owing. So any time the woman needs money, the offering that comes was enough to give. Before I knew, I've paid 2005 and the woman was owing me. And since then, I didn't become poor again. <laughs> Why? Because, you see, God knows how to put certain resources in your hands. I, don't, I didn't say somebody comes to give you money, keep, you go and waste it all. <laughs> Please. Again, if God has not spoken to you, don't go and mess up your life. Don't go and mess up your life. Am I with you here? Or are, are you here with me? So in moving on, the prophet said, take this oil that you have in your whole house. I'm not going to pray for you. You don't know what you have. Look at me. Do you know what you have? And when you take this little oil, I don't know how to finish this message today. Take it to um, go and tell your two children. Go to the town, the cities. Go and look for people whose oil are finished, who didn't use their last oil well. Let me tell you this. Don't forget what I just said. Never misplace your last oil. Never. One of the things I do, my last, I don't spend. My last, I sow. Every last money I have, if I eat, I'm done. If I invest, I have tomorrow. If you have come and you chop all because you are hungry, praise the Lord. You are going to be hungry the rest of your life. But if you can do some fasting and look like a poor person and be begging, oh, please, can I have this? Can I have this? By three months, if you planted your corn, you will start having a farm. And very soon, the people you were begging will start begging you for food. Why? Because you invested your last well. Many people have this mantra. Master, tomorrow will take care of itself. Jesus said it. You are a liar. Jesus didn't say that. He said, do not worry about what you eat tomorrow. He didn't say, don't think about what you eat. He said, don't worry. Worrying is different from thinking. Oh. When you read the Bible, when the week, look, let me, there are some preachers that have come. They just preach without scriptures. Please, if they preach without scriptures, go and check. Most often they've turned it. What is worrying and thinking? I've taught you before. Worrying is looking at the negative side of life. And thinking is planning ahead for tomorrow. Looking at what you have and how what you have can change your life tomorrow. The old prophet whose children were sold was worrying about the little lawyer. Threw it away somewhere. The old prophet said, go and borrow vessels. People are empty. They don't know what they want to do with their life. Bring them. And when they brought it, the prophet said, now go to the room. Lock yourself. It's a mystery. 
lock yourself. It's not everything everybody must know what you do. Lock yourself in the room. And when you lock yourself in the room, now pour the oil into the vessel. Now, it was the under. It was the leftover oil. But as she poured the oil, the oil was never getting finished. As she they poured, that was good. the whole place was filled. And the Bible said, and when the empty vessels were used, the oil ceased. So the oil ceased because there was no more vessel to fill. Let me tell you, when you stop dreaming and having vision for tomorrow, your resources will end. You know, there are people, as soon as they build one house, praise the Lord. Where do you, you thank God. Listen, he said, I will bless you for you to be a blessing. You will build one house, build another house and rent it. Somebody will need a place to stay. Oh, you didn't hear me. Oh, oh, you are not here at all. Many, many, and most of it, resources will only improve. Because you have a vision. There was nothing to fill again. Vessels are empty. Vessels are, so, are full. So the oil too is finished. The oil in the man of God doesn't run out until people don't give it a place to fill. I'm not talking to somebody here. Say a little oil. I didn't hear you. A little oil. Now, the key, which was strange among all these things, was when the prophet said, when you get into the room, shut the door. Shut the door. Privacy. Secrecy. Someone say, man of God. What has shut the door got to do with what you're talking about sitting now? Of course, if you shut a door, you are going nowhere. <laughs> if the doors are open, you are escaping. When they said lockdown, how many of you were locked down? Not some of us. Some of us the following day were in town distributing food. We couldn't be locked down. And when the police and the military see us, I said, look at the back of my car. I said, what is that? I said, no smoke. I said, oh yeah, go. Father Tony was coming and I was calling him, how's the market? He said, the police and soldiers are there. Have you gone to buy the rice? Yes, we bought the rice. Are you distributing? Yes, we are distributing. This, I'm just coming from Pokwasi somewhere. I'm just coming from some, some of you, you were so scared to move because you have nothing to do. You have nothing to do. Lockdown will lock you down. When you have something to do, there are people who are maintaining lockdown will tell you, move on. Because you are the one that is changing society. Many cannot do anything in life because there's nothing to do. Your own life, you don't do anything. Church too, you won't do anything. I think I'm not teaching you. I'm, I know I'm preaching, but I'm preaching. And you don't know you make a mistake and you start clapping. The way you clap for long. <laughs> Amen. So let's move on. So in Mark chapter 6, Jesus sees multitude. Maybe you can start from maybe 35, but let's go to 33. Jesus sees multitude. He's been taking care of them for days. He's been brought to the Bible said for three days he has been having convention with them together. They were together. And after three days, he looked at them and they were like sheep without a shepherd. He saw them as some people who didn't have anything to eat. And so he called the disciples and said, um, lead us. What are we going to do about the church members? They've been coming for three days. There is no food. The disciples said, listen, listen to the mentality of the disciples. Let them go home. Young Pua, sorry. Let's close the church. Let them go. Let them go home. Now, anytime, stop talking when I'm talking. Anytime you face a problem, and you discuss it, people, please listen to their first response. Their first response means sit or disappear. Jesus says, let us do something about it. What do we want to do about it? Let them go home. Are they giving the scripture? Is it on the screen? He says, send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. Send them away. A 
every great person is a person who met a challenge and found out that with this challenge, what can I do to solve the challenge? I'm not sending anybody away. I told my pastors that we are not sending anybody away. If you are crippled, you will walk. If you are blind, you are, you are seen. If you are poor, you become rich. If you are dead, we will wake you up. We are sending nobody away. If you are even a rebel, we will change you to a, a committed loyalist. I know you caught me. Paul said, cast some people to Satan. That is Paul. One day, I cursed my agent. When I cursed this agent, I even blocked him. I was there, I gave him 21 days. And I was there in about 10 or 15 days. He goes to Pentecost. And the Pentecost general superintendent came to me in my house in a dream and said, my son, forgive. Let it go. He's fasting and praying, so let it go. I said, okay. And I woke up. When I woke up, I unblocked him and I called him. He said, he's just finished fasting. I said, hey. Now the truth is this. You, if somebody cares you, who will appear for you? He, he goes to Pentecost just here. The Pentecost is a very big ministry. Any time we call this guy and his phone is not picking, he's in prayer. He's gone to their prayer at Malam. Yeah, big prayer can be at Malam inside there. You, who will appear for you? I know you say Jesus. Now let me move on. They said, send them away. Where would they need to buy you know? These are the empty vessels. Now, do you know why the, the prophet the pro, prophets have got empty vessels? Because when people are empty vessels, they don't even know their value. They don't even know their value. If they knew their value, they would not have waited for them to become empty. Actually, the most dangerous place you can be in life, especially in Christianity, is to be an empty Christian. Jesus was speaking one day and said that when you cast out an evil spirit, the evil, and the evil, evil spirit leaves and the place is clean and lively and when he comes to find the place empty, he goes and go and bring other powerful spirits to come and stay in there. So that is to say that the demons came back because the place was empty. And some people, the witches and the wizards in their house have a way of making sure that you move them away, you stop being there for them so that they can destroy them. It takes a pastor start to know that Satan is doing all this thing just to destroy some people. Am I teaching here? Send them away! Jesus said, no, we are sending nobody away. Look at us, we are sending nobody away. Look. I know how to drive out witches from church. It's easy. I mean, I did some before. You will not come to church again. Somebody brought me yam. They even fried the yam or something. Or what? Auntie Aki can't remember the side of it. I didn't eat the yam. The person called Auntie Aki and said that, but for no, it doesn't, it's not good at all. I gave him yam he didn't eat. How do you know I didn't eat the yam? How do you know I didn't eat the yam? Somebody also left church. He said he gave me cake. I didn't eat Me too. I didn't give it to anybody. And when, when the cake was brought, my office staff wanted to, I said, no, they should throw it away. They said, can't we give it to anybody? No. Can't we give it to dog? I said, no, throw it away. This person got angry. That why didn't I eat? Master, what, how would you? And some people, if they bring it, I eat. <laughs> Wait. You, dear, everything you eat. If you won't eat, your dog will eat. If your dog doesn't eat, your, the ants in your house will eat. And all these people can be used against you. May God deliver you. <laughs> and when Satan wants to destroy you, one of the things he can do is make you a gluten. Most people have been destroyed by food. Food. Who paid you? And you are careful. Adam. 
Jacob and Esau. Because of food, Isaac nearly missed the blessing on the right person. God had said it is for Jacob. But he called the other one and said, bring me food. Let me eat and let me bless you. Bring me food. Food nearly changed the direction. Jesus, first temptation, stand stone to bread. Stone to bread. Yes, sir. Okay. Judas, filled by food. Jesus said, one of you will betray me. Everybody said, is it I, is it I, is it John said, which one of these? Even Judas said, is it me? Judas should be very confident. You see me. Then Jesus took bread, put it in soup. Read your Bible and put it in the mouth of Judas. He ate it, got up, and still went to betray food. Forgetting that whoever you eat with, if you speak against the person, your life will be destroyed. <laughs> Send them away. Let me tell you, who have you thrown away and regretted? Go and ask Chelsea. They have sucked some players who became stars. Mo Salah was a Chelsea player. Mo Salah was a Chelsea player. Send them away. Jesus said, you don't have compassion. And let me say, when you don't have a heart, someone say, God, lift up your hand and say, Lord, can, can your parting come up a bit? Say, Lord, give me a heart from the assignment. Pray that prayer for some few seconds. You need a heart. A compassion needs heart. A heart that feels. Amen. Then he said, oh, give them something to eat. We don't have we too. We are hungry. They are hungry. Over 5,000 men. If you add children and women, you could pass 10,000. And we say we should feed them. Then they came to Jesus that listen, if we even put all our salary together, we put everything together, we can't feed them. We can't feed them. Then somebody came and said that, but there is a little boy here. Never underrate. Never underestimate. Never underestimate. You see, oh, it's about to hurt. Don't worry. It will shock you who will give us money for a roof. Maybe the one you think is a rich person. I've come to realize that rich people are the most wicked people in the, on earth. <laughs> Read your Bible. All the people who supported Jesus were not rich. A widow of Zarephath. Widow. You know, widow's might. Like I tell you this, you are dating a guy. Never ask you what is your school fees. And your hair. Things that he will look and admire you more. He will buy you brazier and panty. He said, This guy loves me. What's with Jimmy? After, don't I give you dress? Don't I give you this? No, that is not. I want something that will change my life. My life. Changing life is what we are looking at, not dressing. <laughs> ah, that is why the Sakawa people, they will tell you that they will give you everything, but they will not give you money. Because that money is not for making life. They can buy all the kebab, chichinga you want. In it, they will buy it for you, but their money will never get into your hands. If you are dating for four or five years and your partner has never asked you what you want to do with your life and will not invest in it and you calculate all the money you have used for food and it's equal to your school fees disappear. <laughs> it's either that guy is a mumu or he doesn't love you. Uh, Maka. Maka. I said, oh, see, my wife doesn't need to go to school. She is sewing. What if you bought her embroidery machine? 
Nebia, hey, where are you, sister? Where are you? Miss Macosa line, pa, and brother machine, me, me, Nabia. So there, don't worry, young copper pen, copper pages in Gabi. Samaka, let me move on. Jesus said, give them something to it. Now, listen, the answer of Jesus is what provoked another answer. When Jesus said, give them something to it, they, they already knew that there was somebody with some five loaves and two fishes. But to them, it is not useful. It is not needed. They knew there was a little oil in the bottle, but they didn't value the oil. But Jesus said, do something about it. Look at someone said, do something about the problem. Tap someone say, do something about the problem. Tap somebody. They say, I'm talking to you. Look at someone say, ask for this one. There, it is you. Get up, get up, get up, and do something about it. If you know that Pastor Tony has money to give you, and you go and he will not give you, you are standing with him, he will marry you. Go and sit at his door. Are you not going home? Not today. What is it? Do you have dresses to wash? I'll wash for you. Don't you think your shoe needs polishing? I'll polish. But Tony, don't you want to say anybody? I'll, I'll go. Are you not going home? Are you doing all that because you're asking for $1,000? Yes. Whatever I will do to I know you have it. <laughs> and when you see that a person is seated, you, you sleep. You wake up at 3 a.m. The person is still seated. You go to church, you come back, the person is still seated. You call the person to your room for a meeting and say, which actually I don't have 3,000, but I have 1,100. Will you take that one? <laughs> oh, it's not true. Oh, is it true? It's not true. Oh, I don't have 3,000, but I have, I don't have 1,000, but I have 100. So will you take the 100? Oh, I don't have. Okay. Can you do this for me? I don't know how to do it. Okay. No, not Jesus. He said, you. He didn't say, you. We are not sending them away. You. Give them something. May God use you to solve the problems of your nation. May God use you to solve the problem of your, of your environment. May God use you to solve the problem of your family. And may God use you to solve the problems of this church. Your amen is not good. I told you don't clap. So if Pastor Tony, you are clapping, clap well for Jesus. I'm preaching. I don't have anything. People are too many. Boy, me, dear God, didn't give me a gift. Oh boy, what will rapping, rapping money from my fans? Who rapping? You have. A Oh, son, come down, put it back, and took a mad and bad and bad. Who says God doesn't like rap? Who says God doesn't like rap? <laughs> oh, amen. And I don't like this. The people sing this song. Nothing in my hands I bring. It's Easter. Simply to the gyro. You must bring something. <laughs> Follow me. You must bring something. They said, oh, five loaves and two fishes. Now, when they brought the five loaves and two fishes, this is where the miracle began. Everybody can have your attention. The five loaves and the two fishes, this is where the miracle began. When Jesus saw the five loaves and two fishes, this is an in inadequate in 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 food. In infraction, I don't know how to quantify it, whether it's 0.01% of. And number one, it is not an adult's food. That guy to realize food. Five loaves and two fishes. Now, for everybody in the town to be hungry, for over 5,000 men to be hungry, and this little boy to have five loaves and two fishes, number one, this guy knows how to hide things. He has been hiding because if people around him knew that he had five loaves and two fishes, they would have consumed it 
earlier. God knows why sometimes he allows what you can do to be hidden. Because if they had gone into the wrong hands, they would have destroyed it. It would not have been efficient and sufficient for what God wants to do. I think I'm not preaching to somebody here. They brought the five loaves and two fishes. And read your Bible. Verse 30, what are we in? How many loaves do you have? They said, and they found out. Five loaves and two fishes. Now look at the next verse 39. What did he say to them? Then he commanded them. He did what? He commanded them. Let's read together. Then he commanded them. All sit down. All. 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 When you have scarce resources, it is not time to move around. When I started ministry in Malam, I only went to town once a week, Monday. And the rest of the, when I get to town, I do all my workings in town. If I get to my Bawe, I'm not moving again. Because everyday movement in town is a waste of scarce resources. If I was reducing, wasting resources, we can't be building this church we are building. And most of people don't know that the ability to manage scarcity is setting down. Do you know what Africa, we will never prosper? Our president and their cabinet, they travel too much. When travel, It's somebody's capital. Oh, it's not true. And don't go for economic class. Private. Best hotels. And I know you say that, man of God, don't you also enjoy some? Me, I, if you give it to me, I will enjoy it. But for me to use my money, forget me not. If you bless me with it, and say, Pastor, look at the car you are driving. Me, I never use my money to buy this car. But if you give it to me, I will drive it and show you that God is good. Even now, if you buy it, I will sell it. 250 If you want to buy it, I will give it to you right now. I will be close my eyes right now. Cash, I will give it to you. Pastor, many are Look at him say, sit down. Let the men hold. And listen, he didn't tell them all. He commanded them. Why would he command them? Because if you have five loaves and two fish and you don't command them, the multitude will scatter on the five loaves and the two fishes and nobody will get anything to eat. Many of you are the reason why bridge is not expanding like it should expand. You don't sit down. Where is your seat? You shall be like a tree planted, planted, planted by the rivers of water. Someone tree, which stream never with us. So that whatsoever thing you do shall prosper. When you are not planted, whatsoever thing you do does not prosper. Someone tree. And it's in the Bible. Check it. Let's read. Go. Oh, you, you, I'm sure you went to school. Read. Go. You shall be like a tree planted by the roots of water that brings forth fruit in his sin, and whose shall not wither. And whatever he does shall what prosper. The Bible also says that the righteous, they that be planted in the house of God, shall flourish. Flourishing comes by planting. Let me tell you this: if you plant a crop, a tree. And every week, every month, you approve the tree. Today, you're moving from here. Next week to Kotobabi. Next week to this thing. Next year to this. Some of you, you have, I don't know how many churches you have. Let me tell you this. I've been in ministry long enough to understand some spiritual things. Let me tell you something very interesting. Me. If you can't meet your problem, sometimes you think I'm not serious. When you finish talking, I say, go home. I just said, go. And sometimes, you think that the man didn't do anything. The next thing you realize that nothing happened. Some place, if you go to say, uh -huh. 
you have to do 40 days fasting. Read Psalm 91 every night. Is it true? It's not true. Something when you go, they will tell you bring some leaves. Something they will tell you bring cassava, um, goat, bring apotoria, onion, pepper, ginger. And make sure you add yam. And make sure it is afasi yam. They know the kind of yam. So sometimes what happens to you is that you do what this pastor said for three days. It doesn't work. Then you go and change it and go and do what this pastor said for three days. That also doesn't work. Then go and do what this pastor said for three days. doesn't work. Then you have combined forces. So it will shock you that if you are not fortunate and you combine herbal medicine to orthodox, your kidneys will speak very soon. Look at someone and sit down. I didn't hear you say sit down. I didn't hear you say sit down. Ask somebody, where is your seat in the church? And I'm saying, Pastor, bah, how can I sit down? Let me tell you this. I'm not feeling that our model is Jesus. But Jesus is somebody who sat down. I showed it to you, but let me show you. Whilst he was on earth, in Luke 4, is this 16 or 17? Let me have it. Look for. The Bible said any time Jesus was there, he went to the temple. And as his custom was, as his custom was, somebody who has a custom, it means that it is something he practiced. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he took the Bible to read. He had a custom of being in church. It was your custom. I'm not teaching here. Some say five loaves, two fishes, or two fish. So how come if people don't sit down, what happens to the oil? Now let me give an example. When people are not seated, you spend more energy reaching out to them. Let me explain something. Last time I wanted to say it, but I, I said it. Yeah. It's one thing for me to touch you with my hand, right? But if the multitude become many, can I touch everybody's head? So what I need to do is two things. The two of you separate at the back. What I would do is two things. You either touch my heart or I touch your heart. The heart does the connection. Am I teaching something here? So I can be standing here. So like the woman with the issue of blood had to decide I am the one doing the touching. Read your Bible. The Bible said there was a time that when Peter or even Jesus was passing, People spread their handkerchiefs and whatever, aprons, or were waiting for just shadow to fall on them. To them, a shadow is enough to get them healing. That is a touching. So let me give an example. I can say something and it will touch your heart, right? Oh, you don't mind me? Or you two can do something to touch my heart. So when the heart is touched, what must then happen is that I don't need to lay hands on you. I just need to speak. Sometimes I don't even have to speak. The touching of the heart is enough because the spiritual world is a world by itself. Okay. 
Genesis 27. Isaac wants to bless his children. If I tell you, tell me and I close. Isaac wants to bless his children. He tells the children, <laughs> I want to bless you, but I can bless you with my hand like that. It don't work. I'll lay hands. Back, 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 back. It don't work. I can also speak. It don't work. So, my son, go to town. Go to the market. Or go to the bush. Take your quiver and get to the forest. Make me venison. Yeah, punchy. Crack, crack, be my do something such as I love so that my soul will bless you. So he was trying to say that, listen, so if you read the Bible very well, later when his brother came back and came to beg his father, that father reversed it, he said, Master, if, if it was my mouth that blessed him, I can reverse it. If it was my hand that was laid, I can reverse it. But the thing came from my heart. And whether you like it or not, Esau, you will save your brother. Not because of anything, because he provoked my heart. Let me talk to all of you here. How many of you here have ever touched God's heart before? I don't know if you have touched God's heart before. It touched God's heart. Oh, hello? Maybe one day I'll teach that one. Not today. I don't want to miss my, my sermon. Look at somebody and say, have you touched God's heart before? What did the person say? Okay, let me ask a question. How many of you have seen somebody do something to touch your heart? Someone did something to touch your heart. When a person touched your heart, what is it that you have that you wouldn't have given him or her? Everything. So when you touch God's heart, there is nothing you can't have from him. I told you, if you want to clap, better do it well. So, moving on. Should I move on? Or you are tired? I should flow. Okay. When I see three, four people get up, then I stop. Where was I? So, look and say, let them sit down. <laughs> 